I'm Ken Eklund. I'm the creator of World Without Oil, which was an alternate reality game uh, for the public good that ran in 2007. World Without Oil came because I had recently been acquainted with the alternate reality game format, and I had been in a separate pursuit looking for how a narrative game could be played um, as a benefit uh, on the internet. A story which is not about some sort of commercial product or some sort of escapism thing, but which is really relevant to concerns that people have. World Without Oil was funded through a grant from ITVS. Their mission, in a nutshell, is to get those stories told that just don't get told in mainstream media, which I interpreted to, to mean basically normal people. So I really wanted to create a storytelling engine by which people very accessibly can begin to tell the story of their lives. So I wrestled for quite a while with kind of the elements of uh, what would it take? What is it that we all have kind of a personal relationship with that we would talk about? And I realized that oil was a factor in all our lives that affect us all individually. So if there was an oil crisis, that would be something that everyone could talk about. It would be very democratic, if you will. An oil crisis would also bring about uh, examinations and people talking about how their lives were lived, how dependent they were on oil or how independent they were from it. Do they live in a resilient way? Do they really cohere with their neighborhood or do they feel alienated? This is the yard of a family that's completely unprepared for any kind of oil shock or crisis. This is my yard. I've always believed that cycling is part of a community. I mean, you can't stop your car in the middle of the road and just start chit-chatting with your neighbor. This is Peak Profit, and I'm taking a moment to share with you my observations here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, in the heartland. It's not just a bunch of separate stories. They actually began to coalesce into this sort of meta story about, about our society, about the world, about um, how we live. We, in the background, would organize these thoughts as they came in. We would apply keywords to them so that you could very quickly find other people in the community who were interested in the same things that you were. The, the engine ran on its own. We were there just kind of making sure that it kept running till we reached the end of the story. So I think one of the reasons that World Without Oil is being celebrated uh, with a Peabody is because it really gave a kind of visceral form to these ideas about collective intelligence, about crowdsourced imagination, about these sort of hive mind. So people really could look at World Without Oil and they could say, oh, this is what that looks like. I mean, this is what it looks like when people really come together. At the end of the project, we had players writing in just saying, you know, I live my life differently now. There is no one solution. We saw people trading all sorts of advice and knowledge about how to make your life more resilient, how to make your life, how to be happier in your life. And, and people adopted little bits of it. They did, it adopted the bits that really made sense for them in their lives. This Peabody actually is communally owned. I just want to kind of acknowledge that the story was put together by a bunch of players with their creativity and their reports. You know, I'm certainly very honored to be the steward of that story. Um, certainly, I acknowledge my team of 20 people. It can be really hard for people to kind of get their minds around World Without Oil because, you know, it was like this thing that had a, 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 a hundred or a thousand sides to it, which I, I guess is part of the fascination with it, why it's still, <laughs> still being talked about 15 years later.